Hey guys, today we've got an interesting project. We're gonna look at the underside of the mower deck on our 60D mower, and we're gonna install some new mower blades. Hey, check these out. These are called self-sharpening mower blades. We'll install these things. I don't know if they'll work or not, but I do understand the theory, and I'll explain that to you as we go through it. Stay tuned. While we're getting set up here, we'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe to our channel and press that bell right beside the subscribe button to get notified of new videos. If you're still not getting notified, even after pressing the bell, check your application settings on your mobile device. You have to set it up to allow notifications from the YouTube app. We appreciate you watching our channel, and we'd encourage you to check out Sunday's episode, Sunday morning, 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. It's going to be an exciting one with the 1025R. Okay, let's take a quick look. We've mowed probably three or four times with this mower. Uh, we mowed the neighbor's yard once before their big graduation party with the TKV20 on it. One thing I immediately notice is a difference between this and our old 54D with the mulch kit. There's not near as much under here. I have not cleaned this since we got it. It was fairly clean when we got it. The mulch kit that we had was a plastic mulch kit that mounted in all of this and that seemed to keep a lot more you know grass and this kind of stuff in there yeah I don't know if I want to clean this dry or if I want to wash it I know I'd rather clean it dry because washing it's kind of a mess looks like there's a little in there in the boot but it looks like it's all coming off easily be sure to set your mower on something stable before you work on it. Okay, I tipped it back just a little bit so that I could catch most of the grass clippings in there, grass, whatever you call this stuff, within the deck. Hopefully a lot of it will fall on the concrete and even if it falls on the rocks, I can get it gathered back up. If this doesn't work very well, I'll have to use a power washer. But it seemed like it was wanting to come off pretty well. It's really not very bad considering how wet the grass has been. I wonder if that TKV20 actually pulling a vacuum on this actually keeps it from gumming up as bad. It's got a little thicker scraper here I think I may try. But it's not quite as sharp. So. Over the long term, this stuff sitting against your deck will cause it to rust and corrode. So we need to get it out of there. If you've got time, do it after every mowing. If you don't have time, well, do it when you can. Your deck will last longer if you can keep it clean under here. These decks are prone to rust because of this, you know, corrosive stuff that gets under there. If it rusts enough, the whole deck just loses integrity. And that commonly is why a deck just totally wears out. You know, if you tear up something like a blade or even like a spindle, you can replace it, but if the whole deck is just rusted through, there's, there's not much left. So this is a good way to, to lengthen the service life of your deck. Honestly, a power washer works better and probably faster, but the negative is it's messy as can be. This load and go is making this a lot easier because it's very stable, right? If I picked it up with the forks, it would just be shaking around. I did that in some earlier videos at our other property where I would just have it hanging by a piece here and it was just hard to keep it under control. I understand that the load and go is kind of pricey, but it really does help. You can get your load and go at greenpartsstore.com slash TTWT. It's listed there along with all the products we've featured here, or we just kind of consider favorite products from Deer. You enter coupon code TTWT when you order, when you check out, and you get free shipping. So greenpartsstore.com slash TTWT. Another advantage of the load and go is I can lift the deck higher. You know, I would pick it up with the forks or whatever. It was hard to get it this high. Okay, last time in my Make Your Mower Great Again episode, you can go back and look at that. At that point, we were working on the 54D. That's what I had on my first Johnny. And I showed you how you could use a, a socket on the back side of the deck to actually keep this from turning. Several folks mentioned in the comments that you could actually just use a block of wood and that's what I did in here. As long as it was hitting this other blade, it, it seems to be working fine.
Okay, let's take a quick look at these blades. There are some chips in the blades. Now this tractor had about 50 hours on it when I got it, but I don't think it had been used very much for mowing. I always hit stuff. Maybe I'm the only uh, poor mower driver there is. Maybe I can get Christy to mow from now on all the time, right? But uh, that is a little concern about these never sharpen blades that I'm gonna show you. Here's all three of those blades. They've probably got, you know, I would estimate they've only got 30 hours mowing, maybe 20 hours mowing. One of them's kind of begin to, to wrinkle or the, the steels begin to fold. I'm not taking those blades off because they're bad. I'm not taking them off because they're worn. I might file them just a little bit and put them right back on if it were me. Truth be told, I probably wouldn't have done anything with them. I'd have probably left them on there and mowed at least the rest of this season with them without any concern at all. I don't tend to get over concerned about the mower blades. They typically cut fine even when they appear a little bit dull. Now, I'm not saying to ignore them. I'm just saying that it's not my number one worry. Instead, the reason I'm taking them off is so I can install these brand new uh, self-sharpening blades. This is a, a brand new product from Deere and self-sharpening, I immediately think, yeah, that's like the lady who called me and said I could spray my yard once every three years if I just used her chemical, right? Because I'd, I'd never have any dandelions for three years. I was a little concerned until I read about the technology and how this worked. So at least I understand the theory I still have some concerns, and so we're going to try them out here. Let me describe the theory to you. First, a little background. If you had a chance to see our plow repair video where I showed replacing the shins on the plow, I talked about how the steel was different hardness in different layers on that plow. The front layer was really hard, and that would help with wear. The middle layer was softer, and that would help with strength. And then the back layer was hard again. Well, that's kind of the same concept we're dealing with here. The very bottom layer, this is, this is the bottom of the blade, the very bottom layer here is very hard. The layers above it are softer. So that's how they're gonna stay sharp. At least that's how they claim to stay sharp. This is gonna wear more on the top and this thin layer on the bottom that is really hard is going to cause it to stay sharp. It's going to protect that bottom corner just a little bit to keep it sharp. Now they do warn not to use these in rough pastures or don't hit rocks with them, don't hit roots with them. Well, sometimes I can't help that, so we'll see how that goes. But it makes sense to me that as long as you don't blunt these with uh, some sort of trauma, uh, some sort of rock or, or something you shouldn't really be mowing, that it might actually stay sharp and, and not get that typical dull front edge you see on a mower blade. Anyway, if you want to try them along with me, you can get them at greenpartsstore.com slash TTWT, again in the featured products. If you want to wait and see my results with them, that's fine too. We'll get back to this probably at the end of the mowing season, worst case the beginning of next mowing season to show you how they performed. I believe these are available only for the 60D at the moment. I understand why the load and go is not available for the other sizes due to the geometry. It's not available for 54 or 72 because uh, the loader width is fixed, right? So they have to make them differently to fit that. And I suspect they'll get that figured out over time. These on the other hand, I'm not sure why they're not available in the 54 or 72 inch widths. Perhaps they just want to see how they're received from customers and so that's why we're taking a look at them, right? So these are expensive. If they work, they're probably worth it. That load and go makes this an incredibly easy job. Okay, while we're fiddling with the mower deck, I think I'll show one complete auto connect cycle. First, we'll unhook from the loader. I already had the linch pins removed before I took this step. Now we'll drive over, and I'll try to show a close up here of how the tire acts over the load and go. I received a lot of questions about how that knob and the bracket here affected the front tire. 
I can confidently say that I put more stress on the front tires every day than what is occurring here. Good chance to see the auto connect working right here. And there it's latched in. This little jerk often helps to get that latch fully seated. And sure enough, you saw that was the case right there. I engaged the mower here to show that it's working. But I would have to get off the tractor now to lock those gauge wheels if I were going to mow. To disconnect, I lower the deck all the way. This is called the install position. Then I can flip that latch over center, which will allow me to back out. And that's all there is to it. Well, actually, there's one more step. And I tend to forget this. In fact, I've seen it in several other videos that we've produced. After you get backed off, you need to raise the three-point or raise your mower attaching mechanism to get that auto connect mechanism locked up out of the way. Stay tuned to the end to see the max horizontal storage height using the load and go. Okay, folks, I think that about does it. Check out the load and go. Check out those self-sharpening blades. Yeah, I know. Sounds impossible. We'll see. Greenpartstore.com slash TTWT. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.